Okay, let's uh, let's do uh, the work problems uh, assignment, and uh, we're gonna. What are we gonna do today? Well, we're gonna define what work is. We're gonna come up with a formula for it, and then we're gonna practice uh, problem solving technique, uh, given, find, and solve to get those uh, those problems done. Uh, so, but first, let's review a little bit of what we talked about in unit one. We talked about energy. And energy was the uh, capacity or the ability to make change in your environment. If something has energy, it can change something about the environment. And we had various ways of storing energy. Okay, we talked about, uh, you know, chemical potential energy. Okay, which we called what? Uh, CPE and you know and I'm, I'm not going to write them all down here I'm just going to say remember there was gravitational potential energy okay there was uh, um, kinetic energy the energy due to motion there was uh, thermal energy and you know those there were some others nuclear energy and so on but these were uh, the main ones that we talked about when we're talking about energy transfers and so on. So these are the different ways that energy is exists in the environment. Sometimes they're called forms of energy. And we said, remember that energy cannot be created or destroyed. All you can do is transfer energy from one, one way of, of being into another way of being. And uh, But those transfers allow you know are the changes that we see in the environment around us now the different ways of transferring energy remember we said uh, there was heating and heating is a transfer of energy when you have a temperature difference when one thing is really really hot compared to something else and so uh, heat energy is is the transfer of energy due to a temperature difference and you know we had conduction radiation convection and those kinds of things but we're not gonna worry about that right now and we had electricity that's the pushing on electrons in a wire and they push on each other and those pushes kind of have this little chain reaction through a wire and we can we can uh, um, you know, move energy from a battery to a light bulb, for example, through electricity. So, in a way, that's, that's a kind of uh, way of transferring energy. Some people call electricity a, a form of energy rather than a transfer of energy. It doesn't really matter how you think of it. I think of it as a transfer. All right, and then, um, of course, and what we're going to study today, we had work. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the new stuff. Work. What is work? Work is the transfer, that is I'm moving energy. Transferring is when you move something from one place to another. The transfer of energy through the application of a force okay a force now what is a, a force a force is uh, you think of force as being a, a just you're pushing on something you're pulling on something um, you know for example here's a little toy car and I'm going to do work on it I'm going to push on it with a force. And there it goes. Um, now, notice that a force, though, has direction associated with it, right? I mean, here I'm, I'm pushing it to the left, but I can also apply a force and push it to the right. So when uh, a quantity has 
uh, a direction associated with it, like to the left, to the right, up, down, you know, forward, backward. We call that quantity a vector quantity. You know, there's lots of quantities that, that you know, you would, to, to find it, you have to say, okay, how hard are you pushing and in what direction, or how fast are you going, in what direction. If you, if you have how much and in what direction, that thing is called a vector. So force is a vector. And um, <clears throat> so let's look at this, at this little example I'm doing right here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to push on it. And there it goes. Now, it's pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. Um, so let's draw an energy diagram for, for that situation. Here's my little toy car. And if you look at it sideways, it looks like this. Right? So I'm going to draw a little picture of it. I like this toy car because it's easy to draw. Now I'm going to push on it. And instead of drawing my finger and <laughs> physically pushing on it, I'm going to draw this force, this push, as an arrow. And I'm going to say represent force. I'm going to represent that with the letter F. The letter F will stand for force. Make sense? OK, so I'm going to push on it with a force. Now, if I were to draw an energy diagram of, the, of this situation, here I am about to push on it. So I've got chemical potential energy. And then I push on the car, transferring that energy with work. <coughs> and what kind of? What kind of energy did all that work turn into? Well, it was moving, wasn't it? So it turns into kinetic energy. And maybe a little bit of it, you know, there's friction and sound and so on, so a little bit of it turned into thermal energy. But let's just keep it simple and say it turned into kinetic energy. OK, now, let me show you something here, though. What if I? I'm going to push on this object, which is this, a gigantic styrofoam apple, or not styrofoam, just foam rubber. And I apply a force to it, but it doesn't move. I'm pushing on this very hard. Well, not really, but let's pretend I am. But it's not moving. It's not, it's, nothing's happening. Do you see that I'm not transferring any energy into this object? Uh, so I'm not doing any work on this object. I'm not transferring any energy. If the object doesn't move, you're not transferring any energy into it. Does that make sense? Now I am using chemical potential energy. Like if you, if you just shove, uh, push really hard against a wall and you do that all day. Okay, you're not doing any work on the wall, but you are expending chemical potential energy. What is that energy turning into as you push? It's turning into thermal energy. Very good. Yes, yeah, so you're just heating your body up and you're getting exercise and it's radiating out of the environment, but you're not doing any work on the wall because the wall doesn't move. But if I do push on this thing, okay, I can give it kinetic energy. I've done work. So the idea is I have to push on something and I have to push on it through a uh, what we call well you can think of it as moving through a distance but I'm not going to use the word distance I'm going to use a different word here um, I'm going to call it delta x and I hope that doesn't bother you to use delta x this means a change And then x, we're going to use the letter x to represent our position, where the object is on the ground or on the table. And we use the letter x to represent its position. And whenever you see a delta in uh, math or in physics, delta means a change in something. 
So when you ever see a little triangle like that in front of a variable, it just means this thing is changing. Changing what? Changing position. And so here is how work is defined. Work is when I apply a force on an object through a displacement or through a change in position. Sometimes a change in position is called a displacement. Now this is kind of physics-y. I teach physics. So change in position is another word for that is displacement. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna be using that vocabulary. So work is, I think you can see that if I push on this object this far, I've done a certain amount of work, but if I push on that object twice as far, I've done twice as much work. So the amount of work depends on the force, how much force I push. I mean, if I, if I push with twice as much force for the same distance, I'm going to do twice as much work. But if I, um, and also if, if I go twice as far, twice as much displacement, and by the way, you can call, for you guys, you can call uh, displacement distance if you want, I won't freak out if you do, like force times distance, that's, but distance means a little something different, it's, a little, it's subtle than displacement, but force times displacement is the definition for work. So we have a formula now, an equation. Work equals force times displacement. So this is how hard I'm pushing on it, and this is how uh, far I've gone. Now, we need a way of measuring force, and we need a way of measuring displacement. Well, force, let's take a look at this, stock, this uh, foam rubber apple. This, this thing weighs one Newton. The Newton is the metric system measure of force. And if I pick this up, I'm picking this up right now. I'm, well, I'll hold it sideways. I'm just picking it up by this little cord. And this thing weighs something. Gravity is pulling it down with a certain amount of force. And it turns out that this apple is just the right size to weigh one Newton of force. It's applying one. The weight of this is one Newton of force. And I'm going to pass this around to you. But you know, if you're watching, you know, if you were absent today and you're watching this at home, uh, just pick up a small apple, and that's about a newton. Um, this is bigger, but it's it's not as dense as a real apple. It's one newton. It's not very much. Now there, we have another unit of force that we use a lot. What unit of force, like if you go home and you want to measure your weight, weight is the force of gravity, what do we use? Pounds. We have a unit conversion factor between pounds and newtons. One pound of force is equal to 4.45 newtons. And we are going to use this unit conversion factor to solve our problems. Then uh, we have uh, a way of measuring uh, displacement. And in the metric system, if we want to measure like how far something got pushed, what would we use? What do we use for, for that in the metric system? We use meters meters, sometimes centimeters, but actually meters is, is how we measure displacement. Another way of measuring displacement, though, in, in you know, everyday 
America is in feet. So we're going to use a unit conversion factor sometimes to go back and forth between feet and meters. And that is one, and this one's pretty easy, one foot is equal to 0 0.3 meters. So that's an easy one. Now, let's work a problem. Oh, before I get to that though, let's go to the metric system. Work. If, if I apply a force of one Newton, that is the weight of this apple, so not very much force, and I push that one Newton of force through one meter of displacement, I push something through one meter, well, what is one times one? It's one. And we have this thing called a Newton times a meter. A Newton of force times a meter of distance. We have a name for that. Anybody know what it is? I think a couple of you should know because you were in physics. What is a Newton times a meter? It's called a, a joule. Now, if I were to take this uh, rubber uh, apple, this foam rubber toy apple, and just lift it over my head, which I'm doing right now, which you can't see on, on the camera, but I'm lifting it up over my head. I just did a joule of work on this apple. By the way, what did that work do? It transferred energy from my arm. If I lift this, this apple, one meter up, I just transferred one joule of energy from my arm into what kind of energy does the apple have now? Gravitational potential energy. So when I pushed on the toy car, I I turn the energy into kinetic energy. If I lift it up over my head, I'm turning it into gravitational potential energy. But here's how we measure it. We measure work. Uh, a Newton of force through a meter of displacement is equal to a joule. Now this Newton is abbreviated with a capital N. A meter is abbreviated with an M lowercase m and that is defined to be a joule and a joule we use a capital J to abbreviate the unit so let's work a problem a work problem A box, and copy this down, is pushed on with a 20 Newton force. See how I say the name Newton? I don't go 20 N force. I say 20. What does the N represent? Newton force. through three meters of displacement. How much work was done? So this is a typical problem that you'll get on the worksheet and on a quiz or a test. It's pretty easy if you know what to do. But I want to show you a problem solving process that works great. It's called give and find and solve. Now on the worksheet, when I give you the worksheet, you do not have to copy down the problem. 
because I think that would take a lot of work. Uh, pardon the pun. But if you do it like this, everything will be good. Given. You'll read the problem, and it will say given. I, I mean, you read the problem, and you write the word given. Then you draw a little picture of it. So here's our box. Just draw a picture of a box. And I'm pushing on it with 20 newtons of force. Now I always draw force as an arrow, right? Because an arrow, you know, the longer the arrow, the more force I'm pushing. And it tells me what direction I'm pushing it in. So I, and then I write the letter F. What does F stand for? Force equals 20 newtons. So instead of writing all these words down, I've just drawn a little sketch. Then I'm going to show this. See this arrow? This arrow doesn't represent force. It represents my displacement, or how much I change the position of the box. And so I'll say delta x equals 3 meters. This picture of the problem with what's given, that's my whole problem. Then I'm going to write the word find. Now what are we trying to find in this problem? How much work was done? What letter are we using as a variable for work? W. So I think you can see that this is, is really a little bit easier than just copying down the problem. But it's more than that. You've processed the problem. You've read it. And now you can draw a picture of it. So you're visualizing it. You're, you, and then you're writing down what you know. And then you're writing down what it is you're trying to find. Solve. Well, what is the relationship between work, force, and displacement? Easy. Work equals force times displacement, or change in position, if you prefer. And notice that I'm not saying W equals F dot triangle X. <laughs> I'm saying what they mean. I'm, I'm saying the word that these letters are variables for. Work equals force times displacement. And that's what I want you to do when you present these problems to the class, which you're going to have to do. Work equals force, 20 newtons, times delta x is 3 meters. And notice that now I'm plugging in my numbers with the variables. I mean, I'm sorry, with the units. I'm plugging in the numbers for force, but I'm including the newton. I'm including the meter. I want you to do that. Now we are ready to solve it. What's 20 times 3? Well, 20 plus 20 plus 20 is 60. Now, what is a newton times a meter? It's a joule. I'm finished. I put a box around the problem. Finally, I want to show you one more, one more thing before we get to the problems. <clears throat> what if I did this? I'm going to take, the, here's an eraser, and I'm going to push it across the paper, like that. Now at the end, Notice something. The eraser's not moving, is it? So it doesn't have kinetic energy. And I didn't lift it up, so it doesn't have gravitational potential energy. <clears throat> but I did work. I mean, I applied a force through a displacement. I transferred energy out of my body 
And I tried to put it all into this. But where did it go? Where did the energy go? Yes. We heated the environment. Turn, all my energy turned into what kind of energy? What's that? Yes. Thermal energy. What force changes the energy due to motion into the into thermal energy? What kind of rubbing force do you think was acting on this? Force of friction. So, <coughs> let's take a look at the force of friction. I'm going to draw this in cross section. And here's my eraser. And I'm pushing on it. And this is the force that I'm applying to it. But there's friction on it. And what direction is friction applying to the eraser? I mean, if I push the eraser to the left, what is the force of friction doing? Right. It's pushing it to the right. Very good. So if I, let me just get rid of this. I'm going to draw the eraser all by itself. The floor, I mean, the, the tabletop is still there. I'm just, here's the force, and I'm going to call that F sub A. And the A means I'm applying that force. But then it's rubbing along the table right here. And so the table applies a force to the eraser. And I'm going to call that F sub F. What do you think that little F stands for? Force of friction. And sometimes we do that. These are both forces. And we need to describe them. And so we put little letters called subscripts on the variable. And that means that the object, uh, I mean, it, it just distinguishes this force from this force. So you can tell them apart. So how much work did I do? And, and let's say we moved this. So let's go, I'll go ahead and draw the force. Here's the force of friction. Here's the, the applied force. And then I'm going to move it to the left like this. There's my delta x. And so here's the eraser at the end. Oops. Here's my eraser at the end. Now, I'm going to uh, draw an energy diagram of this. I start off with chemical potential energy, and I do make the eraser move a little bit. And um, the eraser gets a little bit of kinetic energy, but not very much. As I move it, most of my work is turning into what kind of energy? Thermal energy. And then uh, the kinetic energy, uh, when I stop pushing on it, the force of friction stops the eraser and turns all of that kinetic energy back into thermal energy. So this is work. But this is the work due to my applied force. And um, well, and then we got friction uh, doing work on it as well. So it all turns into thermal energy. Now here's, here's how uh, one, one thing you can see. If I, as the person pushing on this, I'm trying to put work into it. I'm trying to add energy to it. So you would just say, here, this work is equal to my applied force, which is in that direction, times the displacement. And the displacement was in that direction. And do you see that these are in the same direction? The force and the displacement are in the same direction. That's called positive work. And let's say that this force was 2 newtons, and I moved it through 1 meter. Well, 2 times 1 is 2, so that would be 2 joules of work. And I would leave it as positive work. But Let's take a look at the force of friction. 
the force of friction is to the right. But my displacement is to the left. When the force and displacement are in opposite directions, that force is trying to take energy away from the object, slowing the object down. And usually it's turning kinetic energy into thermal energy. So, you know what, I'm gonna erase them. Let's just pretend that all my work, I'm trying to turn it in, this is the work that I'm doing, I'm trying to turn it into kinetic energy, but friction is turning it into uh, thermal energy. And so this would be uh, two Newtons times one meter. This would be two joules. But because the force and displacement are in opposite directions, the force is trying to take that energy away. It's not trying to give it kinetic energy. It's trying to uh, take that energy. So we call it negative work. So here's the thing. When you draw a picture of the problem, if the force and the displacement are in the same direction, it's positive work. But if the force and displacement are in opposite directions, it's negative work. And that's why when you add up how much, when you add up how much work was done on the eraser, if all I did was take this eraser and you go like this. Well, I did maybe two joules of energy. I, don't, I didn't actually do that much, but let's pretend. If I do two joules of energy doing that, I did two joules of energy, but friction did negative two joules of work. I mean, I did two joules of work. The, the friction did negative. So what's the total work done on the eraser? Zero. Whoops, off camera. Zero joules total. The total work done on the eraser was zero. I didn't lift it up. I didn't give it any velocity. So it doesn't have any kinetic energy. The result was, I, didn't, I changed the position of it, but I didn't change its energy. I just heated up the room a little bit, the table, maybe even the eraser. That's the change I made. In, okay, so, um, Hopefully that all makes sense. Now, here's what you're going to do. We're going to do these 12 problems. Let me zoom in. If people are watching this at home, you can just freeze the video and use this as your worksheet. Do these problems. Use the given find solve format. Draw a sketch of the problem uh, when stating what's given. Good luck with that. And oh, notice some of these have unit conversions are required. So go back and review how to do that. Anyway, that's it. Bye.